Right on. Thank you so much, Dave. I have known Dave for a long, long time, and I don't think there's very many people in the community that I respect more than you and what you do for people. You do selfless, selfless things for so many entrepreneurs and businesses in the community with, and you never ask for anything back. So I love you, and I appreciate you, and thank you. And Hillary, I met you years ago. You've become a friend and a mentor and a client and a supporter. And you take my calls at 9.30 at night and talk to me about for 45 minutes about some crazy idea that my friends and I had to throw a fundraiser that's modeled after a Rothschild party of 1976. So thank you for always listening to me. And hi, hi everybody. I'm not really used to this. Um, actually, there's a cap of awards Abby can receive every year. So this is really just kind of trickling down to me. And I know some of you are probably surprised that there's other people that work at the Abby agency. <laughs> no, I'm totally kidding. Um, I, I am so incredibly humbled and honored to be up here. I, yes, I work with Abby. Abby and I are also sisters. For any of you that don't know, we're cut from the same cord and we're just as inappropriate as one another every day. Um, you know, I started working with Abby when I was 17 years old and I was born and raised in Fallon, Nevada and I didn't even graduate high school and I pretty much ran out of that town as fast as I could and I had no idea what I was gonna do with my life. I worked at Krispy Kreme and I got fired because I hate getting up early in the morning. And so, <laughs> and so one day Abby was like, hey Connie, you know, I really need some help like making spreadsheets and calls and stuff. Why don't you like come over and, and help me work? And Abby at this time was teetering on this line of like, she was working for this awesome PR agency out of San Francisco and working on these huge clients like SanDisk and Sonos and whatnot. And she was like, you know what I want to do? I think that instead of taking a vice president position at this agency, I think that I want to start my own company. And this is 2008. It's like just as the recession's hitting, everyone's broke, everything looks like crap, and I have no idea what I'm going to do with my life. But Abby and I at her kitchen table, we launched something, and we had no idea what we were doing or where we were going, but we knew that we had so much passion and that we cared so much. And one of the first things that happened was I got to go to New York City and I got to go on a press trip on behalf of a brewery that, and, that I used to work for called Buckbean. And um, I went to New York City and I went to the Hearst Building and anyone that knows like the new Hearst Building, it's beautiful and it's tall and it's just filled with all these incredible offices and a ton of media publications. So I had a meeting there and I have to go like sit and wait and I'm in the lobby and I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm 18, borderline 19. I have a case of beer that I can't even legally drink. And like anybody that knows me knows I'm super sweaty to begin with. And then on top of it, I'm Hispanic. So it tends to, I just tend to be a moist ball and I'm sitting there and I'm like, oh my God, oh my God. And then someone comes and gets me and they take me up to this conference room, I'm sitting in this beautiful conference room. I'm like overlooking the Hudson River and I'm there and I'm like, oh my God. And I'm just, I know that I'm sweating. I know that my face is white and I know that I am a complete and absolute, she's like, I'm a complete shit wreck. And this woman walks in and she's beautiful and she's poised and she, she's the editor for Esquire magazine. And she sits down and she's like, hi, how? And she looks at me and before she even finishes, hi, how are you? She's like, are you okay? Do you need water? And I'm like, this is my first time in New York City and I'm from Nevada and I'm just super nervous. And she was so great and she got me water and we walked through this whole meeting and I walked out of there not feeling down. I walked out feeling empowered and feeling like, oh my God, I can do this. Like somebody made me feel like I can do this. And so from then on, Abby and I have just sort of been taking things, you know, by storm. And I got to start working with startups, and I got to start working with startups, particularly with a guy named Jim Belosic, who's probably one of the most brilliant technologists that this world has ever seen, and he lives right here in Reno, and he started this incredible company. I got to be a part of that, and I've worked my way up for so many different startups, whether they're in Reno or whether they're outside of Reno. I've worked on a ton of different events. There's never been a time that Abby or anybody that I work with has ever said, hey, we should say no to this. We don't really have time. It's all about we gotta do more billing. We gotta make sure that you know we're getting paid for all this stuff. It's never been like that. It's always been like, hey, let's just go out and let's do what we care about and let's do it really, really, really well. So I've got to be a part of the coolest things of people's just babies of an idea that their whole well-being banks off of. They chose me to be a part of that and without judgment and without boundaries and we've worked together and created some incredible stuff. And since then, as Dave said, you know, I've had the honor of like, I've been published in Entrepreneur and Fast Company and Mashable and all these cool places. And we've gotten clients that were from like the New York Times to Wired to TechCrunch, all this really, really great stuff. But I'll never forget the lady 
in the country living building that not only calmed me down, but looked me in the eyes and told me, you know what might help? You're the first person with tattoos that's ever been in the country living conference room. And I was like, right on, okay, cool. I can, again, I can do this. And so from that moment on, all I've ever done is worked really, really hard for entrepreneurs and technologists in and outside of the area because I believe in what they believe in. And I believe that technology can do so many great things from planning just really great marketing campaigns to truly impacting the lives and well-being and safety and health of other people. And on that note, that lady never judged me. And one thing I've noticed is entrepreneurs never do is they never judge each other. You come with this absolutely insane idea and you tell it to a bunch of people and Doug Irwin's like, yeah, dude, that, that sounds pretty good. Yeah, I think I could get behind that. And then you talk to people like Tracy and she's like, yeah, I could get behind that. I just hope that we all walk away here tonight knowing that never judge anybody from the guy with the crazy software idea to the woman sitting at the bus stop with her children to the guy outside of the convenience store who's just looking for something to eat and probably drink. Let's invest back in our community, what our community has invested in us, and let's never forget where we came from and what we can give back. So, yeah, thanks.